Uh, we thought of Kecek Klate, but uh, you know, the <laughs> um, it would be very poetic, but no one would understand probably, um, or few would understand. Uh, we, we perhaps can start um, by talking about this exhibition itself, of which you have a work. I think it's this one. Yes. Yes. Uh, and uh, it has been, it has drawn a great deal of attention uh, and a sense of, I think, uh, a, a sense of camaraderie, a sense of identification uh, from many of the audiences that have, have come forth. So perhaps I could start with a geographical question rather than a literary one. Um, why do you think there is such a sense of empathy uh, when Malaysians come and see this exhibition? Uh, because this uh, exhibition first time in Chiang Mai, Thailand, the audience is different because, uh, okay, Thailand is the Buddhist most uh, Buddhist country, but most population is Buddhist, and we are the minority in the southern Thailand, three provinces, and we have uh, a Muslim uh, in another province like in Chiang Mai also, but uh, they are more minority, but. Uh, in three province in southern, we are majority, like uh, more Muslim, and we speaking in Malayu language. Uh, when the audience is different, I think the way of thinking and the way of reflection is different. Uh, mostly the people in Thailand also, they know about the southern of Thailand, about the violence, the bomb, and and gunshot and more than 13 years ago and start but this is not 13 years ago before that 30 years when I was young also we have the separatist group the movement to liberate uh, the three provinces Patani to be independent this is more than 40 years ago and but the violence is not grow up like uh, 15 or 30 years ago, like a uh, continue violence. Uh, that time, when I was young, they have a movement like a, they have uniform uh, movement. Uh, the soldier in the forest to fight with Thai government, and after they're doing something short, they will be put. Uh, recognition like a uh, declaration this is my group doing this and uh, the system like that and long ago past 30 years so Thai people looking to the the southern most deep south like a more terrorist something like that and I think they lack of they don't know uh, we also we have art we have a poet like me <laughs> and we have writer and painter and I think Patanis Masa is uh, okay all artwork is not some of them not contemporary some is the, like traditional but uh, uh, some of them is contemporary but uh, when my EM gallery show them to the public. This is uh, the big event for the artists in the Deep South to present the identity of them to not for Thai, to the world. And when Ilham coming here, all of this, this, I think his, this is impact of, uh, of the art. Uh, I heard from Azad, uh, some of the Patani people descend, they now maybe becoming the Malaysian people, but they come here with family to see what the Patani people are doing. I think they keep the, some meaning, not my piece, another piece, some meaning transform with this. And first time, uh, where, uh, the, the back one, in the Chiang Mai, the artist used the, the earth from Patani. All earth from Patani bring to Chiang Mai. This, I think this some meaning. Some meaning because uh, uh, 
the people there struggle for the land and identity. And someday, the exhibition, they move the earth from Patani to Chiang Mai. And the, this earth still in Chiang Mai, I think. And this is amazing. And when come here, uh, this is Malaya land. All people here is mostly is uh, uh, the rest is Malay or Malaya, something Malayu, what, what, whatever we can call. But uh, we're speaking in the same language and we're feeling something the connect from the thousand years ago. Uh, maybe now we are Thai, but uh, people in Patani still uh, call themselves Orang Melayu, Orang Melayu, not Orang Thai. Okay, every day we use Thai language. We study Thai language in school. And we work and we think and the knowledge in Thai language, but uh, we cannot change our blood. Um, language perhaps is a, is, is a good place to interrogate uh, a lot of the work that you do. Uh, and you write in Thai. Yes. Uh, now, where do you position yourself between these two languages? Good question. During I stay in Bangkok, now I'm stay in my homeland for two years. Uh, after I escaped for 25 years from home, and I lost my I lost my homeland, <laughs> and after that I find my way to back to. I have one poem also about the loss, loss uh, like a, my mother tongue is Malayu language. And my second language is Thai. And my third is English. And my fourth is Arabic. I study Arabic. Uh, my first language, mother tongue, is Malayu, uh, like dialect Klantan, Klate. Okay. Every day I use like that. But when I was uh, seven years, I start to learn Thai language and start to learn alphabet, Kokai, Kokai. And the same time also, I read in Tadika, Taman Didikan, Kanak Kanak. This Tadika is famous around the village, all in Patani. Uh, we, I learned Jawi script. I can learn Jawi script more than Rumi because uh, if uh, two books uh, from me, and maybe the same book in English and in Rumi. I can read English fluently. Like a, I can see and I know the word. But in Rumi, uh, slow. I can read also, but slow. But if Jawi, I can read more than Rumi. Uh, we study, maybe another people study more, but I am studying just a, a few years in Jawi script but I can read, still read, can read now. And because I study high school, I study Thai language more than my mother tongue. Uh, so I choose Thai language is the first language for my writing. And you know, when we want to start writing, we must dream in one language. We must think in one language. Maybe we can multiple, but we must switch language. Uh, for me, I choose Thai language. I not choose, uh, I not select, but I want to dream with Thai. But automatically, when I was in Bangkok, I always dream in Thai. Maybe you're not same me, but for me, I think when I start to writing, I must think in Thai language. And. No, I am not confused about identity because I is looking for the language or the atoll, atoll to put my message. If my English good enough, I will write down in English. But I think my Thai language is in my sense. So my poem. I write in Thai first, and after that, some people try uh, to translate into Jawi script, 
but this is all my writing hand, not so beautiful every language. Okay? Edin? Yes. Um, talking about uh, this aspect of one language, of, of you know, when you have to write, you have to think in one language, why do you say that is the case? Um, uh, and, you know, the question about writing in Thai, uh, given the context in Patani, is uh, interesting to me. Uh, because there, there are some writers who, um, I don't want to use the word oppressor and things like that, but if you take Paul Salan, Paul Salan is somebody you admire a great deal, who chose uh, purposefully to write in the German language, although that was the, jangle, uh, that was the language that essentially annihilated his family, uh, now, what kind of um, uh, idea do you have of the Thai language uh, as when you write in it, uh, you know, in terms of the relationship, the political relationship that the two languages have? Do uh, you know in Malay language, do you, uh, uh, Malay language don't have the kalima? Political sign. What is political sign in Bahasa Melayu? I think many words in, Ma in Malay, they not like create the new, uh, the new, the new language in the Malayu sense, like politics. In Malay, what is politics? Maybe before they use siasat in Arabic word. Uh, but in Thailand, uh, I am not biased, but uh, from my study, and I use multiple languages like this, Thailand before, they used parliament for parliament, parliament in Thailand, and take uh, like a politic also, they used politic before, this maybe 50 years ago or 70 years ago, but after that, like they have a uh, nationalists in Thai language, something like that. So they have an academy of Thai language. Ratasa uh, is mean political side. Rat is mean government. Sa is mean knowledge. So uh, I ask many people in Patani also, if you want to reform the language, you must create the, the sense of language by yourself. If you don't like you must think so deep to, to create your language. Uh, uh, Bahasa Indonesia also mostly adapt the language to be Indonesia and Malaysia also adapt the language. But Thai, Thai language uh, from that rat tasa, rat is mean. So, so if in economic, Set tasa. Sa is mean knowledge. Seta set is mean economic. So they have the the way to create a new language of Thai language and make sense. This is Thai language. This is not the translation, but this is Thai language. Uh, I hope so. Like a uh, Malayu language also. Uh, many language. I think thirty percent in Malay language. Adapt from English. Uh, in Patani, uh, for language, we are lost. We, we lost because uh, we don't have the language for communication in the literature. Okay, we have in the Pondok. But in the Pondok, the circle of language only in the old script and only on the on the religious text. But if uh, someone want to write about uh, maybe on the science, on the scientists, on the moon, on the uh, engineering, we cannot write because we don't have the word in Malayu, in Patani Malayu. Because uh, uh, the boundary of uh, after Malaysia independence, Patani becoming the part of Thailand. And we use only Thai. And the Malayu language in, in Jawi script, 
not used properly. We only just uh, speaking language. So we lost now. And many people in Patani, they, like, uh, they want to reform. Uh, but they want to reform, so like, uh, I advise them, uh, if you want to reform Patani language, uh, now you must like, uh, select one language, select the script. Maybe you follow the Indonesia and Malaysia to be, uh, to be Rumi, it's easy, because uh, like a uh, Malaysia language after independence, uh, you have a short story, Jirpin. This is not normal. For, this is the Western culture. You have novel, and you have uh, uh, poesy that a new, new form, not pantong like that. Uh, but in Patani, we don't have novel in Malayu Jawi script. So our language is not developed. So I say, if you adapt Rumi, you will be, be quickly to develop the language. If you choose a Jawi script, you must count from zero. And you must create a new language for the contemporary language. Because if you choose Rumi, you can borrow the text from Malaysia, Indonesia to like a, uh, uh, the textbook. But if you, you want to reform the Jawi script, but if you choose the Jawi script, this is uh, like uh, you keep the last stand of Malayu language, the Jawi script. But uh, in Patani, they, they use like an uh, announcement, some little bit from the Majlis Agama, something like that. But every day, we not see in the Malayu language, we see in Thai. Uh, that's an interesting point. I want to ask you this question because you, you were talking about um, uh, Malayu and uh, Malayu in Patani, and then of course we have the struggle in Bahasa Melayu, and this is also a problem in Bahasa Indonesia. Uh, the coupling of nationhood and language, and then uh, the concept of a national language. And then the need for that language to catch up, for example, with uh, technical terms, with, uh, with uh, scientific terms. Uh, and the, the language itself, the soul of the language itself is very poetic. Yeah? Uh, the Malay language is an extremely poetic language. But in the, the struggle or in the, in, in the rapidness or in the struggle to to, 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 to gain, uh, you know, technical terms and uh, uh, scientific terms, how much of the innate poetic language is lost? In which language? In Malayu. I think if you read in Jawi, the, the word kerana. You will read kerana. You, you will not read kerana. Because A, B, C, is the, the voice is changed. Okay, the Malayu language before, uh, our descent not writing in Jawi script. But Jawi script is a long time. Like uh, they, they adapt the voice of maybe Palawa, something like that. Mm. Adapt to the script, Arabic script, to be Malayu Jawi. And they use long time until like they fix to get the voice of Malayu people to the Jawi script for a long time and speaking. So when start to change to ABC, Roman script, I think something changed. Like uh, in, Pasam, uh, in Malayu, Gletja. Gletja, you understand Gletja. Gletja means move a little bit. Uh, the voice, maybe you, you now, the Ma, uh, Malay people, not feeling like that. But I, I, I have a feeling when, when I talk with Indonesian people, because my view or my type of Malay language only Jawi only. Uh, so when, when, you, uh, when you talk, Kerana, 
Saint is Rumi, not is Jaw, not is Jawi. I think many word in Malay in Jawi script when transform into the Ro Roman script have glacier so much, and the scene of poetic, I think change. 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 Yeah. Um, why have you not written in Malayu? Ah, uh, this is a big question. Uh, during the Thai National Day, uh, maybe more than 15 years ago in Bangkok, and they invite me to talk on uh, our people are the Thai teacher that teaching Thai language. And okay, I stand, I talk. Uh, Bahasa Thai pen bahasa ti song kum pum. Bahasa Thai adalah bahasa yang kedua bagi saya. Uh, the professor that invite me, he after after the the, the conversation, uh, I'm feeling so sad. You talk like that first, but after you after you talk on the stage and reaction with the. Thai teacher, it's okay. Uh, so, again, again, you can question. Again, your question. Why do you not write oh, in, I, in I'm Malay? <laughs> <laughs> because uh, I don't have kalima so much. I don't have the word in Malayu for writing. Okay, the, the word for conversation, I can talk with you I, I think more than 80% I can talk. But uh, for writing, uh, should be the, 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 level, the level of language should be higher than the, than the uh, speaking language. And the deep of thinking also. And when we write down in Malayu language, we don't have the audience. And now my generation, my generation, and after my generation, they understand Thai language more than Malayu. And 30 years ago, when I was young, it was very hard to hear the young kid talking in Thai. But now in the village, young kid talk in Thai. Uh, we proper, probably lost in the language. So I not choose uh, Malay language because if I write down in Malayu, where I should publish it? And where is my audience? Malaysia maybe. <laughs> so I must struggle more because uh, I must learn. I must, I think my day is not enough to start again because I think I should work hard in like a when okay you are a young writer after you all get quite old quite old so I should all in my thought not all in my technique <laughs> uh, I'm interested in your years of exile of leaving your homeland for 25 years um, now what do you mean by left your homeland uh, spiritually? I mean, spiritually, what did it mean, left your homeland? And more importantly, why come back? Uh, because uh, I studied secondary school, I was 15. I started study in Bangkok in high school, three years. After that, in India, five years. After that, back to Bangkok, study in Bangkok. And Okay, this is uh, physically. And spiritually is because I am becoming the stranger of my homeland. I like uh, I looking to my homeland throughout the news and never stay very long for 25 years, I just back maybe one week, not, not one month, stay in home. 
So I becoming like uh, very far from my homeland. Okay, I stay in Bangkok, in Thailand. It's not so far, but uh, like uh, I keep distance by maybe this by spiritual because in Bangkok, uh, the right society of writer all they are Thai people, and uh, very hard to to find the writer from the who the Muslim or the Malay. Maybe I'm only one. So look like I very far from my first language, from my culture. But every time when I back to home, the, uh, I will like a uh, test my language to my friend speaking in okay in Kelantan. Kaca Osam Layu, like in Patani speaking, and ask him, ah, my language is lost. He say, every time he say, it's okay. Still, I, I can keep my dialect. But maybe I feeling by myself, I very far. But uh, like ma the Matetongu is still keep in my mind. I, I cannot, like, uh, cannot remove from my head. Um, the you know sometimes we in Southeast Asia we we have a sense again of nations yeah uh, so so nations are very monolithic uh, things uh, and uh, we tend to associate uh, for example Indonesia and Bahasa Indonesia Thailand and the Thai language uh, um, Malaysia and the Malay language the Philippines and Tagalog uh, when actually there are so many uh, Languages are so diverse uh, within each uh, country. Uh, so, you know, for example, writers in Indonesia are starting to write in Maluku, or uh, they're starting to write in Javanese. Uh, I know there's a great tension all the time between uh, the various languages in the Philippines, you know, people trying to write back in the Visayas language and so on, Ilikanos. Um, now, I'm, I'm not such a big thing about prizes and, uh, you know, those kinds of recognition, but you won a major prize uh, in, in Thailand um, and given to a writer from the South. Uh, what kind of awareness is brought about about the people of the South, about issues of the South in Bangkok when such a thing happens? First thing, the, uh, when this happened, one letter from Interior Minister sent to me, like, okay, we create. This is very strange because uh, I asked uh, uh, Anante Awadi, do you have received this, like, uh, this letter? No, no one. <laughs> uh, because I am the Malayu, uh, they think very hard. Uh, the people, like, uh, because my father and mother not study Thai language. I have a story. When I back one time in my home, I sleep, and my mother, like, called me to get up, something like that. So I reply to her by Thai language. After that, I, oh, no, my mom cannot understand this, so I switched my language to uh, Malayu. Uh, this is uh, like a very hard to type uh, Malayu people to be a writer and fa uh, like uh, got this award because um, uh, we always uh, Thai people will say to us, "You are not good Thai language. You something like that." Uh, the first thing, uh, in Thailand, we have uh, like a traditional poem uh, that uh, we have many rhymes. So, but my poem is liberate words, it's a free words. And this is 30 years of this award. They never give award to the Free words poem. So 
I am the one who liberate Thai language, Thai poetry yeah. from my work. That I am not Thai. I, maybe I can. I, I call myself. I am not Thai in in race. I am Malayu, probably full full Malayu. But okay, nationality. I am Thai. So should uh, it should be not me liberate Thai poetry. It should be Thai people that was born by Thai language and. But this is sec second thing. I think this is very different if Thai people. Uh, but my background is very different from them. So many of uh, young uh, Malayu people in the southern, after I am awardee of Sira Award, they like a, they want to be me, like they want to to write down a poem, and and I have a. Uh, like a, not disciple properly, but like a, they inspire from my books and uh, because uh, the free words is not in Thai textbook. In Thai textbook, we learn until complete our high school. We we learn only the traditional Thai poem, and we have many rich uh, rhymes. We have Klong Si Supap Klon. And we have many, and still used now, and like a thirty percent of Thai poet uh, writing like me, but maybe seventy or eighty. They, they, because uh, Thai language also they have the beautiful rhythm. Beautiful rhythm. Yes, beautiful rhythm. Um, let me ask you a little bit about uh, um, the movement uh, of, the, the, of, of writers and artists in the South. Uh, I mean, this exhibition uh, was really a kind of revelation because it was so contemporary, uh, it was so modern, uh, it was very articulate in the language of its artistry, uh, and there is very, it's incredibly powerful uh, and doesn't play on victimology. Uh, now the South Thailand uh, uh, issue is often played in Malaysia uh, as an issue of victimology, constant victims. Uh, and none of this exhibition demonstrates that. It's incredibly powerful. Uh, can you tell me how this new generation came about? Uh, in Patani, we have a University, Prince of Songkla University, and they have one campus on art. And I think this is the, the beginning of the, like, uh, the art, because uh, in Muslim society, I think when you draw the, the people, and they, it's, uh, the traditional is looking is oh, it's not good. Don't do this. And this is very hard in the, I think, conservative society. It's very hard to become an artist. Uh, but from this college, like a, they have a one class, second class, and fourth class. And after that, they have show, little bit, little bit. And because in Thailand, we have a, the big university on art, is Silapakon University that control all of society artists in Thailand, that if you want to be bigger, you must study there. And you must competition uh, like a national award, Silapakam Heng Shat. And if you pass this, you little bit famous, famous. If you form the rural university, it's very hard to be big artists. So, uh, like, uh, okay, this artist, J. Abdullah, and th that one, I meet him when he is still a student in the, this uh, uh, faculty, and after that, now he becoming the uh, lecturer in this faculty also. And, like, they start to learn little bit, little bit, Maybe uh, first time we don't have any gallery in the southern. Okay, they show in the university. 
And after that, now I think we have two. In Narathiwat, we have uh, one gallery, not, not so big like this, but small, and with Cafe de la Paix Gallery, and, and his, his work also here. And he also lecturer in that faculty. And Chi Amdullah also has art space gallery. And like they bantu membantu together. Because, uh, okay, some of them, they send the art piece to competition with the national award. Uh, but not enough. Uh, so I think my EM doing something like a very thankful for them to be show the great show and still bring here. I think uh, in the art society in Thailand, you must fight so much to be make your artwork becoming prized by the dealer of art. And they have like, if you from this college, uh, maybe you have uh, your professor take care of you, and like a, they have hierarchy. So uh, the people in the southern of Thailand must fight with identity and must fight with art also. I think double. Uh, for, uh, but for me, when I start writing, I am not. Uh, I am not begin with the, like my identity. Like a, I, I start like a, I'm not thinking I am like a, I'm not thinking I am the second class, but I am also Thai writer. So, okay, my, I am Malayu and they know me, but they treat me like a Thai writer, not Malayu writer. Um. Can you tell me the influence that Islam plays in the cultural movement today? Uh, is it, uh, it's obviously a defining uh, influence. Uh, is it also an obstacle? I don't know. Islam and the influence it plays in the cultural trend today. Uh, in art or in society? Not so much. I think because something I am born also about the art of uh, Muslim artists, they just use hijab, hijab. I, I, everyone uses hijabs. I think Islam more than hijab. We have a more deep. Because, uh, yes, some piece here. Uh, uh, not so, because I think Islam is like a, another artist, very hard to them to understand the deep of uh, Islam methodology and philosophy. Until Muslim also. I think if you use only hijab, you choose just the outside of the cover of Islam. Uh, we have like a, the deep, like a Sufi, and we have, but we, like we learn the Islam only like a, the practical, mm. not philosophy. So I think the philosophy of Islam, it, it will be spreading by the art, not the, not the outside Islam, <laughs> not the cover. So in Thailand, I not seen the influence in society or in the art, but some of them, like a, the writer, they try to write about the situation in the southern, like the violence, but uh, for me, not enough. If if we, we want to say this is the influence, not influence, but like a, uh, if you you are not Muslim, you are not a southern people, but you try to 
writing about the thought and and the situation of this it's okay you can do this no one prohibits you but uh, uh, it's not so deep so it's not influenced but you try to uh, could you tell me about your review this journal here okay when I went back to my home two years ago and I I okay I want to isolate myself from people like I, I I'm thinking. So first time when I arrive, when I decide to settlement in Naratiwa, my home, first time I uh, I call my friend. Okay, we want to the mountain that uh, my father have a and rubber tree in some in Naratiwa, but very high. When when I was young, I have like a the good scenery because before that they don't have the rubber tree and I can see the mountain but now uh, all is rubber tree and I cannot see anything so first time I think I want to stay there separate myself and stay in the small cabin but it's, this is a very different from my imagination so okay I decide to stay at home, not stay in the mountain for writing. So, uh, so I start to connection with people like uh, the civil society that they are working in Thai, in the southern in the south. And I think what I can do here because I'm a writer, I'm a poet. So I think uh, I want to doing something like a uh, to make the like society of uh, intellectual society because I think I want the people in the south, southern tell their, their story by themselves so I don't know who can write down uh, because I think they have some message to tell the people so why I should in Thai language because uh, the they understand Thai more than any language in, in three provinces. So I choose this language because uh, many people ask me, why do you don't put any word of Malayu or any one title in Malayu, but you, are, you cover the Malayu review? Because I know the, what I want, because I want the spreading the thoughts. So Thai language in this book, this is not Thai nationalist, but I use as told. I know the situation of language in Thailand and in the Patani also. So I start this first time, like uh, I have workshop with students in university, uh, three day and two night together and like teach them the, my experience about the poetry and I call my friend to teach them about the short story and nonfiction. So one, um, some of them this first time to be writing in poetry so i start this and after that i call like a my friend that in this can you write down some article what about you can not fix the the story just a you you talk about the malayu in about what in the three provinces and some and not Malayu but I told them you must write down about the Patani whatever and okay they they have my message and after that this uh, this book uh, like a very different topic but what about the Patani and next issue, I will, it will be on the art and culture, the theme of this book. But this first time is no theme. This uh, second time it will be art and culture. But all will be in Thai language. Um, I uh, want to ask you uh, a final question and then we will open it up to the floor. And I think you want to do a reading 
of uh, okay. quite a long poem. Um, now, last year, like I, like I said, you, you, you returned to your homeland uh, and uh, established a, a bond again uh, with the entire culture and society of that region. Uh, yet, you are not writing in Malay, uh, although the question of language very much uh, uh, does drive you. Uh, last year, we invited you, that's how we got to know each other, we invited you for a quite a major gathering uh, in Selangor, the Selangor State Government organized it, on the Malay language um, as it is today. Uh, now, what kind of empathy and what kind of bond and what kind of relationship do you think you have with the Malay language writing world? Uh, before that also, I have a connection with uh, Malaysia writer. Before I have <laughs> becoming a Sirai Award, before I just coming here and know many of them and some people in Penang. Uh, because uh, I know in Malaysia they have uh, maybe I can separate two group, group grouping with uh, group by Malay, Malay language writing and in English. And from your festival, I think I got some relationship with them, and like a, uh, make me like a, the connection of Malayu language, like a, from Indonesia, and I think we still have something connection together. May, okay, maybe I, I'm not writing in, in, in Bahasa, but uh, I think for me, this is like a, uh, this is my heritage also. I feel like that. Uh, maybe some people in Indonesia writing some book. I think I feel this is my language also, and Malay people writing a book. Like that, like a, the the heritage that I I am one of them because I think I cannot separate myself from Malay world mostly in language that I working in language very hard to me that to deny this so I'm still feeling. This is a spiritual, maybe. Mm. Yes. Great. Uh, I'm going to open up to the floor, um, and then we will f end by reading the poem. Okay? It's a poem in six parts. Uh, have any questions from the floor, please? Yes, at the back. Hi. Uh, Kun Zakaria, you didn't refer to your short sojourn in India. Uh -huh. Did it inspire you at all, the time that you spent in India studying? Yes. Uh, when I was young, I studied Thai. I never loved poem or literature, but I read novel. I, 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 I love novel so much. So when I was in India, I must study Arabic, but I must start from the f like a f First step, study there. So every day when I study with my Maulana, I don't understand what he say to me. So when the class from the morning until afternoon, you don't understand anything. What will you do? So I'm like, I write down something in my notebook and not connect with the, what I study because I don't understand anything. Two years like this. So I start writing some feeling. I think from that make me like a uh, thinking, poetic thinking and put on. But what I write down, this, I don't understand this. This is a poem or a literature because I, uh, when I'm study high school, I don't know. This is a free verse. It's a, a kind of poem of many world, modern world. So in India, like uh, 
the situation still in the Muslim society in India, mostly in the intellectual of Muslim in India, they they have a like a more Sufism in spiritual. So I think I got something from them. Uh, every event like this, they will open with the Quran. And second, should be reading a poem, maybe in Arabic or in Urdu. During that time, when I was a student, if they have like, like hafla event like this, the student always invite me to reading a poem in Arabic. Uh, uh, like Nasheed, something like that. Like, Asinu lana walhamdu lana walhamdu lana Asinu lana walhamdu lana I forgot. <laughs> uh, like, uh, this is from Muhammad Iqbal. Adinu lana And they, Alhamdu lana wasin. Muamaratun taduru ala shabab. Something like that. And uh, that time, I don't understand anything. But I, like, I, I learn by listening. And, but I can sing like this. So I don't know why I, I like this. I never want to be poet because I'm studying Arabic. Uh, uh, I'm studying Islamic science, Arabic, and literature. Arabic language and literature. When I complete, maybe I becoming a ustad, but I not sure this. So, I think, yes, I inspired from five years in India by living and see the people of India and a kind of. A, if you stay in India five years, you can stay anywhere in the world. I think. <laughs> Any others? One more? Shall we read then? Yes. Okay. It's a poem in six parts. So, um, why don't we read the Thai and the English part by part? I think <laughs> the feeling is cutting. It's cutting? <laughs> so you want to read the whole thing in Thai? Maybe you can read in English first or I'm reading Thai first. What do you Thai prefer? First? Read Thai first or read English first? Okay. Read English first. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Thai first. Should be the original first. Uh, because I think in poetry, you no need to know the language yes. of that language. Because uh, poetry, they have something like a special language, poetic language. Until you not understand this, I think you can get it. I, I will show you how you get it. ข้ามาตามหาบทกวีจากฟากฟ้าลงมาสู่ดินดอกไม้ไม่ต้องมีกลิ่นปืนไม่ต้องมีกระสุนฝืนไม่ต้องมีไฟนกไม่ต้องม
มาตามหาบทกวีที่ได้หลงทางและสูญหายไปจากวงโคจรก่อนพลูโตจะกลายร่างเป็นดาวแคระเหมือนแหลกร่างอยู่บนทางช้างเผือกหลุดหายจมดิ่งลงไปในหลุมดำบทกวีจะต้องอยู่ที่ไหนสักแห่งบนชายฝั่งอันไม่เป็นที่รู้จักในทุ่งนาอันระเหิดแห้งบนมาตูภูมิที่ไร้อิสรภาพในสลัมเสียงร้องระงมบทกวีอันถูกจองจําในคุกล้านกําแพงในแพ่งทางของเขาวงกฏในอุโมงค์แห่งความลับใต้รองเท้าบูธเผด็จการในธรรมเนียบของเทรราชหรือในห้องสมุดร้างไร้ผู้คนท่านทั้งหลายปวดบอกแค่สิบทกวีหายไปไหนใครล่ามโซ่ตรวนบทกวีเอาไว้ใครสังเกตบทกวีจะท้องถนนใครเด็ดปีกนกพิราบใครเหยียบย่ํากินมะกอกใครฆาตกรรมเสรีภาพใครยึดอานาจจากเสรีชนใครช่อฉนป้นความดีงามใครมอบความใบ้แก่ผู้กล้าบทกวีหายไปไหนบทกวีตายแล้วหรือยังใครเห็นศพบทกวีบ้างไหมท่านทั้งหลายข้าเห็นบทกวีในดวงตาของพวกท่านในความรักและความชังในความสุขและความทุกข์ในความปรารถนาสันติภาพบทกวีนับล้านจำนวนจาในจินตภาพของพวกท่านโลดแล่นในจินตนาการของข้าจากหุบเขาแห่งความหมายบทกวีเบ่งบานงามสะพรั่งเช่นดอกไม้แรกฤดูใบไม้ผลิจากท้องทุ่งแห่งความตายบทกวีกรีดร้องสะอื้นร่ําให้แววตาของเด็กกําพร้าใบหน้าหมองเศร้าของบิดามารดาผู้ที่บุตรชายได้กลายเป็นธงชาติศพซากแห่งอุดมคติตามมาหลอกหลอนข้านิวัฒกรรมอันจอมปลอมท่านทั้งหลายสิ่งที่ข้าได้กล่าวไปเพียงความฝันสีขาวของคนบ้าผู้หนึ่งมาทุกภูมิของเขาร้อนหลุดเปลวเพลิงแต่เราค่ำคืนที่ไร้หมู่ดาวตะวันพันดวงไม่อาจสาดแสงเหลือเพียงจันดวงเศร้าสีเซียวในราตรีเปลี่ยวอันยาวนานลมอบอ้าวในค่ำคืนที่มืดมิดเสียงหมาหอนในหุบเขารถไฟที่แล่นไกลออกไปลมอบอ้าวในค่ำคืนที่มืดมิดเสียงหมาหอนในหุบเขารถไฟที่แล่นไกลออกไปเสียงหูดหอยหวนปลุกคนงานให้ตื่นเผชิญกับชะตากรรมท่านทั้งหลายโปรดฟังในสิ่งที่ข้าไม่ได้กล่าวกล่าวในสิ่งที่ข้าเงียบเงียบในสิ่งที่ข้าฝันฝันในสิ่งที่ข้าลืมลืมในสิ่งที่ข้าคิดท่านทั้งหลายโปรดฟังอีกครั้งโปรดฟังในสิ่งที่ข้าไม่ได้กล่าวกล่าวในสิ่งที่ข้าเงียบเงียบในสิ่งที่ข้าฝันฝันในสิ่งที่ข้าลืมลืมในสิ่งที่ข้าคิดคิดในสิ่งที่ข้าตามหามันอาจอยู่ในดวงใจท่านครับ I've never read this poem before um, on the page or aloud so I'm just going to try Uh, in English, of course, we don't have the breath, yes. so um, don't blame me. Blame the language. Uh, in search of poetry, in seven parts. Part one. From sky to earth, flowers require no aroma, guns require no bullets, firewood needs no fire, birds need no wings. The factory of dreams. The blackened chimneys emit filthy poison. Dirty politicians stain their nasty colors on the world. So much beauty has been reduced to dust. Men of every character transmute into devils, rivaling and striving in the name of race. Ways of colonialism, the sacred wars, over and over again. Seek justification in the name of God. My eyesight is terrible. <laughs> I take off my glasses. Sorry. Two. I travel to pursue poetry that has vanished from aesthetics, from the human subconscious, the kind of poetry that makes the world cry, yet yields hope to the world when it is recited and heard. It's powerful. Passionate words, pronounced tragic rhythms and melodies, every time the truth of deadly injuries is expressed. Three. I travel in the pursuit of poetry that has lost its way and disappeared from orbit. Before Pluto was demoted to a dwarf planet, 
It smashed into the Milky Way, lost and sunk into a black hole. Poetry must have been somewhere on an unknown shore, in some barren field, on some man's homeland craving freedom, in a noisy ghetto. Poetry might have been confined in a prison of a million walls, at a crossroads deep inside a labyrinth, in a tunnel built of secrets under authoritarian boots, in the house of tyrants, or in a deserted library. Four. People, tell me where poetry might exist. Who enchained poetry? Who ordered the dispersal of poetry from the streets? Who broke the pigeon's wings? Who snapped the olive twigs? Who assassinated freedom? Who usurped power from the people? Who tricked and exploited virtue? Who cursed heroes with mutism? Where is poetry? Has anyone seen poetry? Has it died? Has anyone seen its corpse? Five. People. I recognize poetry in your eyes, in love and hatred, in happiness and sorrow, in the desire for peace. A million poems speak in your imagination, thriving in my imagination, from the valley of meaning, poetry blossoms in beauty like flower blossoms in spring. From the field of death, poetry wails and weeps, the wounded eyes of orphans, heart rending faces of parents whose sons have been emblazoned like national flags. Carcasses of the ideal keep haunting me throughout the phony discourse. Six. People. What I have said is merely the white dream of a madman. My homeland is in flames on a starless night with a thousand suns unable to shine, only the sad, pale moon on a long, lonely night, sultry wind blowing in the dark, a lone fox howling in the valley, the last train departing in the distance, the whistle mourns to rouse workers from their sleep to accept their fate. Seven. People. Please listen to what I have not said. Speak the words that I have held in silent silence. Remain silent about my dreams. I beseech you to dream all that I have forgotten. Forget what I have thought. Reflect on what I've been seeking, for it may reside in your heart. Zakaria Amatia. Thank you, brother.